Ngorongoro Crater is a spectacular wildlife sanctuary in Africa's Great Rift Valley. At more than 100 square miles, this is the world's largest volcanic crater. Geology alone would make it a natural wonder, but it's also home to 25,000 large mammals. It's a combination that attracts 95,000 visitors every year. Ngoro Ngoro means big hole, accurate, but rather an understatement. So rich is the wildlife and so spectacular the landscape that access is strictly controlled. The crater is 12 and a half miles across and is all that remains of what was once Africa's highest peak, a volcano that blew its top in an explosion that shook the world. The 2,000 foot high walls are steep and create both a fortress and an enclosure for the animals that live on its floor. It's a world within a world, a mini Africa. Footprints made by our hominid ancestors have been discovered here. They're two and a half million years old. Very early in Goro and Goro visitors, an adult and child. And today, family groups are still coming here. Unlike so many other parts of Africa, the crater is blessed with an almost continual supply of water. The result is plentiful year-round food for the 40,000 grazers. And because of the huge amount of game, Ngoro Ngoro boasts a higher concentration of the big predators, lions and cheetahs, than anywhere else in Africa. It's a photographer's dream. The best way to see the wildlife is by organized safari. At 6,000 feet above sea level, the days are cooler and the animals stay out in the open for longer, making them easier to photograph. Some of Africa's last black rhinos are protected here. Their success is due to the crater's rich variety of shrubs, herbs, and clover, their ideal diet. Rain comes seasonally, and when it rains, it pours. The water collects in a shallow soda lake in the center of the crater, home to thousands of flamingos. Huge elephants wander the forest. In fact, they wander anywhere they want. Everybody gives way to elephants. Lions hunt in highly skilled groups, some stalking, others lying in wait. An animal this size will keep the pride going for two to three days. Some facts about Ngoro Ngoro's predators. Cheetahs are the fastest land animal. They can run at 70 miles per hour, but only for the length of the football field. The serval hunts using its incredibly sharp hearing. Its long ears pick up other animals with great accuracy. Hyenas, with their strong jaws, are among the crater's most successful predators. Even the cubs are born with pin-sharp teeth. Lions are the biggest land predator here, though up to 80% of cubs die in their first year. Behind every predator there is a watchful vulture. Its feather-free head is ideal for bone stripping. The crater is the essence of Africa. It's what most tourists come to see, and it supports over 250 grazing animals for every square mile of its floor. A natural wonder indeed.
Mount Everest stands at 29,034 feet high. That's five and a half miles, or the same as 20 Sears Towers standing on top of each other. It's the world's tallest, and that makes it an irresistible attraction. Up to two and a half thousand tourists a week make the trek to marvel at its grandeur. It takes an eight-day hike to reach Khalat Patar, a viewing platform at 18 and a half thousand feet. Everest was named after Sir George Everest, an English cartographer who helped map the Indian subcontinent. It's at the eastern end of the Himalayas, on the border between Nepal and Tibet. The mountains were formed 60 million years ago, when a plate bearing India collided with the Asian plate, crumpling and thickening the Earth's crust. And these forces are still at work. Everest is getting two inches taller every year. Nepal and Tibet were closed to foreigners for more than 50 years, but in 1920, the Dalai Lama granted permission for Everest to be explored from the north side. Over the next 30 years, scores of attempts were made to scale the peak, and many lives were lost. 261 people have died on this mountain. 100 bodies remain up there in the ice. On May 29, 1953, a New Zealander, Sir Edmund Hillary and Sherpa Tenzing Norgay reached the top and stood on the roof of the world. Since they climbed it, Everest has grown by about eight feet. British climber Alison Hargreaves was the first woman to climb to the top alone and without oxygen. And as I came up to it, I just burst into tears because I knew at that point I was going to make it. And I could see the wonderful, you know, the prayer flags flying in the wind and, and all the different bright colours all against the snow. And it was, I was just so tearful. It was amazing. <laughs> it was lovely. Only about 1,000 climbers have ever reached the summit of Everest. It's still an exclusive club. Most of the 125,000 tourists a year arrive by air, allowing a sneak preview of the delights ahead. Everest attracts the adventurous. It's not a destination for the unfit. A trek involves more than two weeks hiking up rough paths to increasingly high altitudes. The Nepalese people reward travelers with a warm welcome, and these guys know how to party. Tourism is Nepal's biggest industry, and being a Sherpa guide or running a guest house is a popular career choice. Namchi Bazaar is probably the world's highest trading post. Two and a half thousand trekkers a week hire warm clothing here and stock up on food and supplies. It's amazing what you can buy at eleven and a half thousand feet. Everything here was carried up on foot. There's a rich variety of animals up here. The tar. Part goat, part sheep. This nimble animal is nothing if not sure-footed. The snow leopard survives, but was almost hunted to extinction because of its beautiful coat. Glacial spiders can be found at 22,000 feet, surviving on wind-blown insects. Birds of prey survive here in many different forms. And then there's the yeti. Does it exist or doesn't it? If you come here, be sure to bring a camera just in case. If you do make it to Everest, you're sure to have an abominably good time.
Russia is the world's largest country, and it boasts an amazing natural wonder, Lake Baikal, the oldest, deepest, and biggest by volume of all the planet's lakes. Its rich diversity of plants and animals and its freshwater beaches attract a quarter of a million visitors every year. It's in Siberia, which itself is truly massive, bigger than the United States and most of Western Europe put together. All this water fills the Baikal Rift, an enormous trench that slices through southern Siberia. At over 500 miles long and a mile deep, it contains no less than one-fifth of all the world's fresh water. If it were emptied, it would take all the rivers in the world a year to fill it up again. The tourists come for the short, warm summer months and stay close to the shore. Baikal has about 2,500 recorded species of animals and plants, an amazing 1,500 of which are unique to the lake. More than 50 species of fish live here. The salmon-like amul is an important local food. So is the sturgeon. There are many filter feeders responsible for the remarkable water clarity. Visibility is 130 feet. The water is the purest in the world. Freshwater sponges proliferate, and the deeper you go, the more remarkable the lake gets. You need specialist equipment for the journey, though. A mile down, most of the lake bed is mud, 20 million years worth. In places, it's five miles thick. You could bury Mount Everest in the silt at the bottom of Lake Baikal. Unlike most deep lakes, there's plenty of oxygen down here, but no plants grow in these dark depths, so scavenging fish feed on particles falling from above. It's in the summer months that you'll find Baikal's most famous residence, the Baikal seals. They're the smallest seals in the world, and one of only two freshwater species. Space on the lake's few islands is limited, and once you're on one, it's a case of you scratch my back and I'll scratch hers. There are other creatures that enjoy basking in the sun, and they flock to the lake in their thousands to swim, go boating, and relax on the beach, if the kids will let them. The tourists and the seals make the most of the brief summer before September brings the first sign of winter, snow on the surrounding mountains. The long winters are bitter in Siberia, with temperatures dropping to far below zero, and the surface of the lake freezes over from January to May. The ice can be three feet thick. The surrounding woodlands are blanketed with deep snow, turning them into a winter wonderland. As the sun warms up, meltwater breathes life back into the lake. Because of the water's purity, the ice is as clear as glass. Swarms of 20 different kinds of caddisfly emerge, providing a good source of protein for hungry birds and bears, still sleepy from hibernation. In the 20th century, the mineral riches of the Baikal area attracted heavy industry to the lake. But since 1992, that's changed. The region has been one of the first to benefit from the Russian government's reversal of decades of poor environmental policies. Since 1992, Lake Baikal and the entire surrounding area has been designated a national park. With 250,000 visitors a year, Baikal is one of Siberia's top tourist sites, and as clean, fresh water becomes increasingly sought after, one of its top treasures.
Africa, a continent of contrasts, cradle of mankind, and home to some of the planet's most exotic creatures. You can travel to this natural wonder by car, rail, or plane. 300,000 people visit Victoria Falls every year. This is the widest cascade of water falling anywhere in the world. They call it Mosi Oatunya, or the smoke that thunders. Two million gallons a second plunge over the edge. Bordered by Zambia on one side and Zimbabwe on the other, these aren't the tallest, but they're certainly the biggest falls on the planet. The spray from Victoria Falls billows 1,000 feet into the air, creating its own rainforest. It's an island of lush vegetation in an otherwise parched landscape. There are five separate falls in this line, all channeling their deluge into the cauldron below, before flowing onwards to the Indian Ocean, 932 miles away. The falls cascade over volcanic rock formed 150 million years ago and eroded by the flow of one of Africa's greatest rivers, the Zambezi. The best time to visit is between February and May, when the falls are at their most spectacular. Visitors will be exhilarated by the penetrating spray and dazzled by the perpetual rainbows. When Livingston first saw the falls, he said, on sights as beautiful as this, angels in their flight must have gazed. He was only the first European to see them. They had been moving the locals to poetry for years. Apart from footpaths and tours, the falls offer a choice of more thrilling activities. Bungee jumping off the railway bridge that connects Zambia and Zimbabwe has become the world's most exhilarating leap. And when you've got your breath back, it's time to wash off the dirt and grime of the day with a trip down the gorge below the falls. Rafting through this seething water is a mixture of sheer terror and heaven. I think uh, being Africa, you can definitely, uh, you know, make the make the fun meter go higher. I mean, you're further away from society as we know it, and you're just out in this wild place, and you're going full out, and you're just loving it, you know. So whether riding down it or climbing back up it, you'll never get over the world's biggest shower. As the fame of these falls grows over the years, more and more people are traveling across Africa to see the Zambezi River plunge over the edge of this mighty cascade.
Australia is the world's biggest island. And although Sydney Harbour and the Opera House are impressive, they can't touch the wonder of Ayers Rock, which is 1,200 miles west of Sydney in the middle of the desert. Despite the fact it is so isolated, it still pulls in a steady stream of visitors. Ayers Rock is called Uluru by its original owners, Australia's Aborigines. It's the biggest single rock in the world. It stands over 1,100 feet high and it is six miles in circumference. Every year it draws up to 400,000 visitors who come deep into the outback to marvel at this wonder. Unless you want to fly, getting to Ayers Rock involves quite a trip. There's a 1,200 mile rail journey, much of it across a featureless desert to Alice Springs, the nearest town to Ayers Rock. Then you've got 270 more miles of desert to cross. To experience Uluru, more than 1,000 tourists a day arrive here in the geographical center of Australia. Half of them content themselves with taking a photograph from the ground of this colorful colossus. Its characteristic rusty red color is actually caused by rust, by the oxidation or rusting of iron particles in the rock itself. But half of all the tourists want something a bit more stretching, a climb to the top. This is not without risk, however. Twisted ankles are common, and there have even been fatalities. We've traveled sort of like 2,000 miles virtually through the desert, you know, and there's this rock here, and it's just a challenge. You know, it, it just wants to be climbed, basically. You have to do what you feel right doing, and I wanted to climb, so I climbed. <laughs> but all the visitors want to toast the end of the day with a refreshing beverage. But for others, the rock is a sacred site. All this land round about us, the rivers, the creek, the ranges and the hills was created at the time of Chukopa, the time we call the dream time. In Dreamtime legend, Uluru plays a vital role in the creation of the whole world, and it's said to contain women's secrets a knowledge that forms the critical link in the initiation of young girls into adulthood. It's a really important sacred place. There are many national parks in Australia around Melbourne and Sydney, but here this is an Aboriginal national park with very strong rules. It's a very sacred place which is really important to us. Because it's a site of such deep spiritual significance, the Inangu Aboriginal people try to dissuade visitors from climbing Uluru. They offer Aboriginal guided tours instead. Unless you fancy sleeping under the stars, the nearest alternative can be found just a few kilometers north, the air-conditioned resort of Ulure. Everything to keep the tourist happy and a rock view. Whether it's stories of the dream time, the isolation, or just something in the air, the magic of Uluru gets all who visit it.
Florida is one of the world's top tourist destinations with fantastic beaches, hotels, nightlife, and home to some particularly different types of wildlife. Most visitors stay in and around Miami, which is only an hour's drive away. The Everglades attracts 1.1 million visitors every year. Covering three and a half thousand square miles of wetland, the Everglades is a unique habitat, the only subtropical reserve in North America. It's an extraordinary mixture of habitats. Tropical mangrove swamps lie close to temperate pine and cypress forests that succumb to the dominating force of water. There are two real seasons, wet and dry. In the hot summers, the ground dries up quickly. But for most of the year, the Everglades is a slow-moving river system, flowing at just over a yard an hour. The mangrove strip is where fresh water mixes with salt water. Every few years, Florida is hit by hurricanes that are strong enough to destroy buildings. The Everglades has acted as a salt-tolerant natural barrier, protecting the freshwater interior for thousands of years. An even more enduring survivor, whose ancestors walked with dinosaurs, is the American alligator. Here is some gator data. It's a member of the crocodile family and dates back 200 million years. Florida is one of the few places on Earth you can see both alligators and crocodiles. Alligators will eat just about anything. But favorites are fish, turtles, and small mammals. Young alligators feed on insects and snails. Males grow up to 12 feet long, weigh up to 550 pounds, and contrary to popular belief, rarely attack humans. Muscles that close the jaws are very strong, but once they're shut, a man can hold them closed with bare hands. Wrestling juvenile alligators is a show put on as a tourist attraction, but it is now believed to cause unnecessary suffering to the animals. When a male wants to attract a mate, he roars in a way that makes the water dance around his back. Females can hear this from more than a mile away. Try doing that next time you're out. Most tourists come here as day trippers, and the fastest way to get around is by airboat. But if you want to see the Everglades' most unusual creatures, a far gentler mode of transport is required. Manatees are distant relations of the elephant. They are warm-blooded mammals and grow up to 13 feet long and weigh up to 3,000 pounds. The Everglades is a wonderful habitat for more than 350 species of birds. It's a great hunting ground for cormorants and aingas, which become more like fish underwater. In the summer, wading birds congregate around the deeper pools to feed on the many fish trapped there. It's the chance to see so much undisturbed wildlife that attracts so many tourists to this unique wilderness, the Florida Everglades.
Imagine a place where you could drive non-stop for three days without seeing any animal life or vegetation. An area so vast it is equal in size to the USA. The Sahara spreads over 11 different countries. Only 15% of the Sahara Desert is actually sand. The rest is a mixture of gravel and mountains. Stretching across most of North Africa, this is the biggest expanse of waterless land on Earth, about 3 million square miles. These mountains are in the middle of the Sahara. At night, it can freeze. During the day, temperatures can rise to 137 degrees, oven-like conditions that rob the land of its moisture. But it wasn't always like this. The Sahara Desert is a recent natural wonder. 5,000 years ago, the climate was much wetter. These ancient rock paintings show grazing animals. Great climate changes overtook the world at the end of the last ice age, robbing the Sahara of its rain. Nowadays, rainfall in the Sahara averages about five inches a year, but when it does rain, it's torrential. Water runoff is so rapid that the ground channels it into flash floods. More people are drowned in deserts than die of dehydration. Water is crucial to survival here, and towns have grown up around any permanent water supplies. Millions of people live in the desert, mostly in cities such as Cairo and Tunis. These thriving metropolises have exotic markets, bazaars, and even choking traffic jams. The Sahara's most famous landmarks are also its most mysterious, the pyramids. Away from the towns, the scorching dunes repel all but the hardiest of animals. With ground temperatures reaching over 150 degrees, animals have developed ingenious solutions to the problems of living here. Snakes only touch the ground at two points, keeping most of their bodies off the hot surface. The nomadic Tuareg managed by traversing the Saharan sands using the ship of the desert, the camel. Here are some facts about the camel. It has two toes connected by skin, so that they splay out on the sand and don't sink too deeply into it. Its nostrils can be closed, so that it can shut out sand grains during a sandstorm, and its long lashes protect its delicate eyes. Its hump is full of fat, which in emergencies can be converted to water. A camel can live without water more than ten times as long as a man. When it is time to drink, a camel can down 25 gallons in ten minutes. And after all that drinking, what could be better than to sit down and rest your hump? That is, unless the Paris to Dakar rally is coming by. Once a year, this grueling and dangerous rally thunders through the desert, pitting 350 drivers in a 17-day race against the clock. The course starts in Paris and ends six and a half thousand miles later in Dakar, Senegal, the equivalent to driving from New York to L.A. and back again off-road. The Sahara is a formidable barrier to travelers and the mightiest of all the Earth's deserts.
This part of Australia has become a must-see for most trans-world travelers and is definitely one of the world's top natural wonders, attracting over two million tourists each year. At more than 1,200 miles long, it can be seen from space and covers 100,000 square miles, about the same area as California. It was discovered by the English explorer Captain James Cook when he literally ran into it. The reef consists of individual coral polyps, tiny creatures which join together to form huge colonies. Each polyp lives inside a hard shell which we recognize as coral. The polyps put out small tentacles to grab whatever food they can out of the passing current. The barrier reef is the largest collection of carnivores anywhere. The reef area teems with the most colorful wildlife on Earth. 400 kinds of coral, turtles, dolphins, more than 1,500 species of fish, 4,000 types of mollusk, and more than 200 species of bird. All in water that never drops below 68 degrees, the critical temperature for coral survival. No wonder it attracts more than 5,000 visitors every day. Around 35,000 adventure seekers every week come out on organized dives here which are open to everyone from the expert diver to the complete novice. Underwater, you can get more than just a glimpse of the reef's more exotic inhabitants. It's unbelievable. There's like turquoise, luminous blue and green fish. Some are this size, some are this size, some are little tiny shoals of fish. That was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Always look forward to the Great Barrier Reef and we've conquered it. The Barrier Reef is not without its perils. Here are five things to be aware of. The blue ringed octopus. This little creature is a killer. In the unlikely event of being bitten, you have only 20 minutes to get help before dying. Sharks. Shark attacks are rare, but they can happen. Scorpion fish, a fish with a painful sting in its side. The stonefish, incredibly well camouflaged. Step on one of these, you're in a heap of trouble. And the reef itself is delicate. Dropping anchors on the coral or standing on it can kill it. If you don't want to get your feet wet at all, you can get a bird's eye view of this natural wonder by helicopter. Strange, but true. Air travel is a great way to see life underwater. The reef's larger inhabitants are clearly visible from above. Most of the reef is now a marine park, generating over $500 million a year for the tourist economy of northeastern Australia. It's the combination of unique wildlife, glorious weather, and sandy beaches that attracts two million people every year to the Great Barrier Reef.
This is the world's largest tropical rainforest, covering over 2.3 million square miles, and home to more than half the planet's plant and animal species, with trees higher than a 10-story building. The Amazon rainforest attracts more than 2.3 million tourists. A thousand miles from the sea, the river is still an amazing 10 miles across. At more than 4,000 miles, the Amazon River is the longest in the world, carrying a fifth of the world's flowing water. The river basin embraces nine countries. Ten of its tributaries are over a thousand miles long, and it has an island in its delta the size of Switzerland. But it's the wealth of animal life in the rainforest that most of the tourists come to see. The jungle is so thick that rivers offer the only ways through. And when the rivers flood, there are some real surprises to be found swimming between the trees. River dolphins. These botos are almost blind and hunt fish by sonar. The electric eel can stun its prey with shocks of 500 volts. Freshwater stingrays have a sting in their tails, but it's the piranha that has the most fearsome reputation. The dangers of piranhas to man have been greatly exaggerated, but they do make short work of any opportunities in water. They are drawn to disturbances in blood. But the law of the jungle dictates that the hunter can also be the hunted. Life is very layered here. Animals on the forest floor are very different from animals that live in the branches 100 feet up. 50 feet higher still, the canopy itself is home to thousands more, many unnamed by science. To stand any chance of finding or naming anything yourself, you need expert help. So take an eco-tour in the rainforest at South America's fastest growing vacation. Armed with mosquito nets and cameras, tourists can stay in mud huts and learn some new skills. Visitors are encouraged to take only photographs and leave nothing but footprints, and the tourist dollars will benefit the communities where eco-tours are based. It's very much um, a sharing experience. They want to learn about our cultures and um, and they'll, they're very open about theirs. Here you have the chance to, um, to inform yourself about their life. And should you want to get the mud off your jungle boots, this is all in stark contrast to what can be found a short flight away in the capitals of the surrounding countries. And while you're there, you can consider the fragile nature of the vast richness of the Amazon basin. Logging, oil exploration, and slash-and-burn farming may easily leave us all poorer, not just the Amazonian Indians. It is the most threatened of the world's natural wonders, so go see it while you can.
In this part of the world, everything is big. There's big buildings, big cars, big football teams, big cowboys, big long roads through big wide open spaces. So it's only fitting that the largest canyon anywhere in the world is here. The Grand Canyon attracts over five million visitors every year. This is the best example in the world of nature's awesome handiwork. The Colorado River cut through many layers of rock over millions of years to produce the official largest canyon anywhere. This natural wonder is so big that you could fit Central Park into it 1,500 times. It's as long as 350 Golden Gate bridges laid end to end. It's a land of limitless superlatives. The Grand Canyon National Park is located entirely in northern Arizona. Two-thirds of the planet's age can be traced in these strata. Dinosaur footprints 70 million years old have been uncovered, and the rocks at the bottom date back some two billion years. The river is still eroding, but dams now dominate where once dinosaurs did. The 700-foot Glen Canyon Dam drives turbines that power the cities of Phoenix, Los Angeles, and Las Vegas. As well as generating electricity, the Grand Canyon is a natural wonder that can offer the white-knuckle ride of your life. The Colorado drops more than 2,000 feet through the canyon against a scenic backdrop of Disney-like fantasy. This is the ultimate roller coaster ride. It is also one of the world's best trout rivers, and that attracts a particular type of predator. Beyond the river is desert, but there is wildlife in the canyon. Tarantulas. Ravens circle overhead, ready to pounce on an easy meal. Bighorn sheep are at home where nothing else can get a toehold. The Gila monster, one of the world's two poisonous lizards, is also a canyon resident. And the fastest growing life form here is the agave flower spike, which grows six feet in two weeks. But a mile above the canyon floor, the rim is 30 degrees cooler, and it is from here that the canyon's five million visitors a year get their first view of this natural wilderness. Most tourists drive here. During the summer months, the parking lots are full by 10 a.m. Up to 30,000 people come to look every day, and of these, 5% hike down the trails to the bottom. But come well prepared, up to 400 people have to be rescued by helicopter each year because of injuries and heat exhaustion. The canyon's 5 million annual visitors make it the most visited natural wonder on the planet.